Hello and welcome to another Simplified Astro video and uh, today we're going to be dealing with Focuser Backlash um, and it's specifically Backlash Compensation. Now I use Sequence Generator Pro but most image capture software uh, has the facility to allow for Focuser Backlash Compensation. Now what the Backlash Compensation is, is allowing for the the inherent gaps that are there between the teeth of the cogs within a gearbox system now a rack and pinion focuser is just a, a type of gearbox and invariably in most focus motors such as lakeside you'll have a motor and then a little mini gearbox and again the there's tiny little gaps between the teeth of the the cogs of those um those gears now focus a backlash compensation allows for that it lets us take up the the gap in between the gears um, you'll see on this image that inherently within most types of gearbox there are some that don't have it um, such as planetary gears and so on but but in the r and p uh, gearbox and the standard gearbox such as in the focus motors you will have these small gaps in between the teeth now this gap is known as backlash and when you drive a gearbox one way and then turn around and drive it the other way that gap changes from one side of the tooth to the other side of the tooth and that is the the amount of backlash that you've got well on a focuser uh, that backlash is no good to us because all that we're doing is if we think we're driving in two or three steps um, and changing focus we're not we're actually just taking up that little gap in between the, the teeth of the gearbox and that's where backlash compensation comes in uh, what we need to do now is we need to measure that amount of backlash so it's the time between or the distance between the focuser uh, being turned in one direction and then turning it in the other direction and the the actual focus tube moving because if you drive your focuser out and then you drive it in the very first part of that inward movement almost always will will just be taking up the backlash in the the gearing it can be more or less in in some gearboxes it, it really depends how good the gearbox is uh, how tight your focuser is it, you know it depends on many many features so the only way to actually get the correct measurement is to measure it it's not a fixed uh, amount you can't use somebody else's figure and program that in thinking it's going to work because it may not uh, but it's also not a critical figure because we're only taking up the slack it doesn't actually matter if we go slightly more. In fact, it's better if we go slightly more because it means we've definitely taken up the slack. But it needs to be a compromise. What we don't want is uh, all we need is five steps to take up that backlash in the, the gearbox and then we go and program in 100 steps because, yes, you know, we'll fix it, but we're doing far more travel than we need to do and that's just pointless. It's just wasting time and it's running your focuser for longer than, than it needs to. So the idea is to measure the, the actual amount of backlash that we've got and then put in slightly more. So if your backlash is five steps, then, then program in eight or nine steps. So we know that after five steps, we've taken out the backlash and we're going just a bit more to make sure that we're, we're in the place where we want to be. Um, it is critical. Uh, backlash compensation is something that I would recommend that you do implement all the time. You don't need to with a Crafer focuser because Crafer focuser is a friction type drive. It doesn't actually have a gearbox. But I still recommend doing it if you've got an auto focuser because you're then allowing for the backlash in the focus motor gearbox, not just the uh, the gearbox on the, the focuser itself. Uh, so I would still recommend doing it with a Crafer. I have seen people commenting, oh, I don't need to do it because I've got a Crafer focuser. Well, I suggest you do because uh, it does account for the focus motor as well then. Now I have seen um, somebody mention before that they measured their backlash um, on their focuser by tying a cable tie uh, around the focus knob so that it sticks up in the air and then obviously it makes it easy to see and then once that started to move that was it. Well that's actually okay on a Crafer focuser because as I said it's friction drive so that there is no movement between the um, draw tube and the, the focuser. But that's not okay on a rack and pinion because on a rack and pinion we want to actually measure not only the backlash of the focus motor but also the focuser. Now the way that I do mine is a little bit Heath Robinson but it works and it's simply to tape a piece of paper onto my draw tube and to lay that over the top of the, the focus housing. 
I also then tape a piece of paper onto my focus housing. I then drive my focus outwards and I draw a little line where the two pieces of paper overlap. And all I do then is using Sequence Generator Pro, I just drive my focuser in one step at a time until I can't see the line. Now, when I can no longer see the line, I then know that I've taken out all the backlash. Uh, and then I note the number of steps that I've moved from where I was in the first instance to where I was after I'd, uh, I can no longer see the line. And that's my, uh, my backlash figure. Let's say that, for example, is five points. So I've moved five steps. Um, I'll then set my focuser um, backlash, backlash compensation to eight because I know that after five steps I've taken all the backlash out. I'm now going to move it eight steps so I know I'm, I'm way in. I mean, that's not the only way of doing it. There are many ways of doing it. You can, you know, some people will use uh, vernier calipers and so on. You, you can do that. That's absolutely fine. But because it's not a critical measurement, it, it really doesn't need to be that precise. It's up to you. If you're a, a, a precision engineer and you prefer to do it that way and get it exact, that's entirely up to you. But it doesn't need to be. You can just get it near enough and then add a bit. But as I said before, don't go adding hundreds of steps because you're just unnecessarily wasting time. Now, naturally, if you've got a, a draw tube with increments marked on it, there's no reason why you can't use that. So you can just move your focuser out so that you can see a line and then change your step size to one or two steps and then move it in a tiny bit at a time. So you'll see with my first step here, it uh, barely moves at all. With a second step, uh, it moves a tiny bit. And with a third step, you can see the, um, the increment going all the way up to the uh, the focus housing so that means we've taken out all our backlash okay so to set up the focus of backlash compensation in sequence generator pro and um, because it's going to be a permanent feature of uh, any one of your profiles that you're setting it up for we're going to go to tools equipment profile manager and then select whichever profile it is that you've got this particular focuser on um, go to the focus tab and then click on the button other and what that will do then is bring up this box and you'll see here is your focus of backlash compensation um, settings. You've got a checkbox here, in and out, a drop down box so you can select which direction will be your last direction of travel. So for a, a refractor typically it's going to be in and then in this box here you set your compensation step size which we've uh, calculated by working out how far the, uh, the focus is travelling to get rid of the backlash. Make sure that the checkbox is ticked and then click OK, save that profile and then OK. And then that's it. Next time you load that profile, uh, those focuser backlash settings will be loaded. Now to adjust the focuser uh, by one step at a time or two or five steps, however coarse your focuser is, is going to determine how many steps you move it uh, to find your backlash. Uh, but it's largely dependent upon what software you're using. So in Sequence Generator Pro, for example, I can look at my focus control module here and I can change my um, fine step size to, say, 1. And then each time I click fine in, you'll see that the focuser will move in one step. I click it out, you'll see it will come out one step. But because I've got my backlash compensation, you see there it moved out and then back in. Um, similarly, if I'm using the... Uh, Pegasus Astro Ultimate Powerbox, for example. Again, here on the Focuser tab, you can see I've got um, my preset step sizes. So I can move it, uh, say, in one step here, and you'll see that drops to 73 then and drops it to 73 on Sequence Generator Pro. It doesn't matter, it, um, you know, if you've got a separate um, motor controller, there will usually be a function on there to just move it inwards. Uh, but it, all you need to do is to be able to monitor the number of steps that you've moved in. It's as simple as that. It's also worth noting at this point that you'll notice in the Ultimate Powerbox um, Focus Module, you, you actually have an inbuilt backlash compensation feature in there. Now, if you're using imaging capture software, such as Sequence Generator Pro or Maxim DL, you don't actually need to enable that there. The capture software will take over control of the focus control. Um, and the backlash compensation. So it's done from within the image capture software. If you don't use that and you're using the Ultimate Powerbox 
as your means of controlling your focuser, uh, then you will need to enable the backlash compensation here. So you just check the tick box and then the figure that we established earlier, which was 40 steps, um, gets put into this box here. Um, other than that, you just leave it disabled and your image capture software will uh, control the backlash compensation.